Hey guys, Econ John here. Welcome to a new video series where I'm going to teach you part of a advanced microeconomics course, which is, you know, the type of stuff you'd go and see on the graduate level, stuff at, that you would see in master's levels programs. And I'm going to go through every single detail that you have to know about monopoly or that there is um, on that level. So let's go. So this is the first picture that you usually see when you're introduced to uh, the concept of monopoly behavior about our monopolists going and producing where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. And this is a case, right, which is where our monopolist is unable to separate between its market participants, meaning that he can only charge the consumers in this market one price because he's unable to go and separate the individuals in that market. So based on the graph before, our monopolist has to find the optimal price P and optimal quantity Y. The monopolist profit maximization problem is written as the following, right? In the most naive sense, um, he has to choose uh, P and Y such that this function is maximized such that it's demand that it goes in faces, right? Is greater than or equal to what it produces. So. These, this is a completely different statement at the bottom, this constraint, meaning that the firm cannot go and produce more than what is being demanded because that's just you know inefficient. Subbing this constraint into our objective function, we go and have the following where our firm now only has to choose one variable, right? Has to choose price, right? So though this seems like the most natural spot to be, um, we want to go and really solve for our inverse demand functions, right? So the corresponding uh, problem for this is that, you know, we now change our Y's to being, you know, just constants and our prices to being endogenous by being functions of Y. And we have this equation in the box where we're maximizing with respect to our quantity produced. This is convenient because not only do we solve for only one variable, meaning that this is just a standard unconstrained optimization problem, but we also gain more insight to how the monopolist production behavior is related to its pricing. So from our equation, it follows that our first order and second order conditions are the following. The first condition simply states that our marginal revenue is equal to our marginal cost. While our second condition shows that the requirement is that for our profit function to be concave. We can rewrite our first order condition as the following, pulling out price. Um, we now have PY, right? Price as a function of output times one plus P prime as a function of Y times Y all over P is equal to this marginal cost. Doing some more rearranging, we get this result in the box where we have our prices, which is determined by the output produced, times one plus one over epsilon as a function of output, which must be equal to the marginal cost, where this epsilon term is the elasticity of demand facing the monopolist. So this is a lot different from, you know, your usual picture where we're going and saying that our marginal revenue is equal to our marginal cost, because there's a lot more that's going into this, right? As in we have this factor of elasticity playing a role as well. 